our next speaker is also a critical care cardiologist at Brigham and Women's, and, and Ben Olinchuk has really uh, pioneered um, um, metabolic studies trying to understand the relationships between uh, peripheral and central metabolism in the cardiovascular space and broadens the, the topic in uh, his talk, which is uh, addressing mouse models of remote cardioprotection. Thank you. Uh, so today I'll talk about um, some novel mouse models of remote cardioprotection. This is one area of uh, research interest for my laboratory uh, to try to identify uh, novel endogenous factors which might uh, help tissues uh, survive ischemia, reperfusion, insults. This uh, idea starts with a clinical observation uh, known as ischemic preconditioning. This dates back to early clinical studies. Uh, of patients presenting with myocardial infarction. So all things being equal, patients presenting with myocardial infarction, patients who presented with pre-infarct angina tended to have smaller myocardial infarctions than patients who did not present with pre-infarct angina. You can model this uh, ischemic preconditioning in large animal models. This is one of the first reports in dogs in which a dog's circumflex coronary artery was briefly occluded and released multiple times prior to a large myocardial infarction. And you can see that the animals which undergo this ischemic preconditioning signal have smaller infarcts. Now this isn't due to changes in collateral blood flow, um, and what's interesting is you don't need to precondition the same coronary artery territory. You can precondition the left anterior descending coronary artery, and there's something about that ischemia uh, which leads to smaller infarcts in the circumflex coronary artery territory. What's even more fascinating is you don't need to precondition an artery in the heart. You can actually precondition a remote arterial bed with ischemia, and most, this is done most commonly with limb ischemia. There's something about that limb ischemia signal which at a distance can protect the heart from an ischemia reperfusion insult. This can also be modeled in large animals. Shown here is a pig study where the pig's leg was made to be ischemic by means of inflation of a blood pressure cuff. And something about that blood pressure cuff inflation at a distance protected the pig from myocardial ischemia reperfusion injury. Now, as you can imagine, there's a lot of interest in translating this uh, into clinical practice, and this has been studied for many years. Uh, there were a number of single center studies of iatrogenic planned cardiac ischemia in which inflation of a patient's blood pressure cuff. Uh, of a blood pressure cuff on a patient's arm actually led to improved clinical outcomes in planned percutaneous coronary intervention or shown here in coronary artery bypass grafting. More recently, two large random, randomized controlled studies in multi-center fashion failed to replicate in the coronary artery bypass grafting uh, literature the, the, the previous successes. Now, there's been a lot written about why this might be, whether the choice of anesthetic was appropriate, whether the protocols were correct, but suffice it to say, it's very hard to translate a, a therapy like remote ischemia into clinical practice uh, in, with an incomplete understanding, I guess, of the mechanism. And part of the issue, of course, is that ischemia is incredibly complex. The ischemic cell death is a complex uh, pathway. Is, ischemia is not one thing, it's many things. There's, there's tissue hypoxia, there's nutrient deprivation, as well as metabolite accumulation. And ischemia involves multiple different cell types and tissues, as well as inflammation. And so what we thought to do was take advantage of the importance of hypoxia and ischemia and create a more tractable model of, of the ischemic preconditioning. Now, we know a lot about the genetics of hypoxia sensing. So hypoxia is sensed by a family of enzymes called egalens. These are also called uh, PhDs. These are alpha-ketoglutarate-dependent dioxygenases. Uh, which function to hydroxylate the hypoxia-inducible factor alpha subunit, or HIF alpha. So when oxygen and alpha-ketoglutarate are present, HIF is hydroxylated and targeted for degradation. And so you destroy the main hypoxia uh, transcription factor. When oxygen is absent, this reaction is impaired and HIF can accumulate and affect a hypoxia uh, a gene transcriptional program. And so our, our general approach then was to create what we call pseudo-hypoxia, which is to genetically delete the main egolen paralog or pharmacol pharmacologically inhibit it and induce hypoxia responses even in the presence of normal oxygen tension 
normal uh, tissue perfusion and asked whether pseudohypoxia might be sufficient for cardiac protection. Now certainly on a whole animal uh, basis, if you uh, treat, these are, these are mice subjected to left anterior descending coronary artery occlusion and release or IR injury. If you treat um, mice with a pharmacologic inhibitor of Egalens, this uh, fibrogen drug called FG4497, or if you systemically delete Egalen 1 in the animals, these mice are protected from myocardial ischemia reperfusion injury. What's even more interesting, if you just delete Egalen 1 in the skeletal muscle but not in the heart, you see a similar degree of cardiac protection. Now with this model, you can begin asking some interesting questions. Uh, the first question you can ask is, is this remote cardiac protection in the model due to a humoral factor? The classic way to do this is by means of a parabiosis experiment. In a parabiosis, two mice are surgically joined so that they begin sharing a circulation, but they don't begin, they don't form new nervous system connections. And so you can make parabiosis pairings between a wild type recipient animal who's subjected to an MI and a donor par partner who either does or doesn't have Eglin 1 deleted in the skeletal muscle. And what's fascinating is you can actually transfer the cardio protection uh, from one animal to another, providing evidence that there's a humoral factor involved in the cardio protection. So, uh, Fast forward a few years and, and a number of unbiased uh, studies and, and you can come up with what in this model is a candidate mediator for this protection. Um, and so what we found in, in this model was that when, sorry, when we deleted Egolan 1 in the skeletal muscle, this led to elevated levels of the Egolan co co um, substrate alpha ketoglutarate. Elevated systemic alpha ketoglutarate levels affected systemic transaminations and altered tryptophan metabolism, leading to uh, production of this molecule kynurenic acid, which in this system is necessary and sufficient for this cardio protection. So our approach uh, to this model is really to identify factors and then transition very quickly into large animal models to validate that this has any significance for animals bigger than a mouse. I think um, that's one area, obviously, where partnerships would be incredibly helpful. Um, and then if we, if we can replicate this uh, protection in large animals, uh, to really then delve into what is the target, how is kynurenic acid acting in this setting. The other thing that this uh, raises is a very interesting idea that remote pseudohypoxia is sufficient for cardio protection. Uh, so what about remote hypoxia? You know, there are uh, a very tractable system where animals can be made to have remote hypoxia. So this is a mouse with a xenograft tumor that expresses a hypoxia reporter construct. And you can see that tumors on mice become hypoxic. You can then ask a very interesting question as well. Are mice with xenograft tumors uh, protected from cardiac ischemia reperfusion injury? In this instance, we did a, a model of global ischemia where uh, on a Langendorf preparation. And what's fascinating is if you take hearts from mice with a melanoma xenograft and compare them to mice, hearts from mice without the xenograft, these hearts are incredibly tolerant of global ischemia. So a very uh, blunted elevation in end diastolic pressure during global ischemia and a very fast return uh, to normal end diastolic pressure, uh, just illustrating ischemia tolerance. These tumors have very high levels of kynurenic acid. We don't know if that's mediating the cardio protection in this system. But you can imagine this is an incredibly tractable system now. You can take these cells out, genetically modify them, see if you can abrogate or improve uh, remote cardio protection. And thank you very much.